After the last video about the radar absorbing materials, a few people asked about plasma stealth. Since you seem very interested in this subject, let's try to make sense of it. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Plasma is an excited state of matter. It is a mix of ionized gas, atoms and free electrons, and it is very common in everyday life. A free flame is made partially of plasma. An electrical discharge is made of plasma, uh, neon lights are filled with plasma when they are on, and one of my favorite toys, the plasma ball, well, it's made of plasma. Since the electrons tend to combine with the ions to make it persist, it is necessary to continuously pour some energy into it, in the form of heat, electric potential, or ionizing radiation. Plasma interacts with electromagnetic radiation quite a lot, and it makes sense because there are a lot of free electric charges in it. Plasma, at the same time, absorbs, scatters and reflects the electromagnetic waves, including, under the appropriate conditions, the radar waves. Now, how can we use plasma on a plane to make it stealth? Since plasma has free electric charges, it can be influenced by electric fields. This property may be used to control the airflow on aerodynamic surfaces by some electrodes rather than by mechanically mobile sections. This technology has been studied, it works particularly to control the energy and the flow of boundary layers, but is not commonly used because it requires a lot of electrical power and may have some unintended consequences uh, for the operation of other systems, for example, or uh, the area of corrosion. This is not what we call plasma stealth and is not what we are talking about. It is historically confirmed that experimentation was conducted to use plasma to shield the American supersonic spy plane SR-71 and its predecessor the A-12 from radars. It is historically confirmed that some results were actually achieved, albeit in what measure is still a secret. It is not clear whether the technology was ever used for real operations or not. The two largest radar reflectors in both planes were the air intakes and the engine nozzles. To conceal the intakes, a layer of plasma was electrically generated around the central cone. To conceal the nozzles, cesium dust was injected in engine exhaust, where heat would have created the plasma. In both cases, the system worked reducing this radar signature of parts of the plane that, without it, would have had an even higher signature. So the plasma was reflecting the radar, but less than the airplane itself. Everything started when, in 1999, an interview from Russian academics was released stating that a bolt-on device to envelope a fighter in a plasma screen was operative and available for export. Well, that was the only mention that we have of it. We have no trace of it being produced or sold in Russia or abroad. We have no news of it being installed on a fighter we have never seen anything that could be a device of such nature. If you know otherwise, please let me know in the comments below. What we have seen, and it is confirmed, is a clever application of this technology to partially mask the large antennas of Russian radars that, even if they are off, through the Rad Dome, reflect a lot of radar radiation. The device generates a thin layer of plasma just in front of the antenna, and the antenna can be made stealth by changing the shape or coating it with 
rather absorbing materials. So it is advised to conceal for a limited amount of time the antenna while the radar is not working. It has been tested on a Sukhoi 35 in the mid-2000s and it was reported to work but we are unsure if it was ever deployed or if it is used by the most recent Russian stealth fighters. And finally, coming to the SSN-33 Zircon, well, that missile flies up to Mach 8. At that speed, plasma starts forming anyway around the nose. Plus, eventually, the size is simple enough that some form of plasma stealth might, in theory, be applied. There are several reasons why a cloaking device that envelops whole plane in plasma is not feasible or nor practical with the current level of technology. First, the flow around an airplane is not stable, it changes even radically during maneuvers. It would seem that the layer of plasma might disperse very easily when the mobile surfaces move or during a sharp turn, for example. Also, in horizontal flight, at constant speed, some parts of the flow might oscillate, making it very hard for a compact layer of plasma to actually persist. Also, in the same way the plasma shields the plane from the impinging radiation, the plasma should also shield the airplane system from the outside environment. The airplane would be protected by radars, but it would be electronically blind and incapable of communication. Plasma tends to glow, so particularly at night it might reduce the radar signature, but the optical signature would skyrocket. More, the plane would leave a plasma trail that is reflective to radars, albeit weekly, and it could be used to track the plane itself in a way similar to the tracking of ICBM trajectories. Finally, the plane itself would be weakly reflective and the eco, albeit small, would look like a sort of a furry ball with a tail, clearly pinpointing it as a plane. However, what might actually exist, but mind, this is my conjecture, it's pure conjecture, is some form of device that could generate, for a limited period of time, a plasma layer around a particularly reflective section of a plane. It could, for example, allow a stealth plane to have an external load without sacrificing all the stealthiness. This could make sense, but we have really no information that anything like this exists. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, which is a bit different than usual. If you had, let me know in the comments below. In the meanwhile, thank you for watching and goodbye.